Welcome back, boys and girls, to Nick Does Maths. Um, this is a bit of a follow-on video from a previous one we did, which we will pop a link uh, down the description or somewhere on the screen. I'm not really sure yet. Um, where we were going through a step question and it brought us onto the idea of a Laplace transformation. Now, for a quick review on that, just go check out that video. It talks a little bit about what the Laplace transformation is and we get a few results out of it. So a Laplace transformation turns one function into another, but the nice thing is, is we can relate different functions to each other's Laplace transformations if they're related. So for example, the Laplace transformation of the derivative of f is just s times the transformation of the function itself minus the function at zero. So we, get, we are going from something to do with a derivative to something without a derivative, which is kind of neat. Same sort of result for the second derivative. And then we've got a few others here that I've put down. Um, for example, the plus transformation of the function at a t instead of at t, we get this. Uh, the Laplace transformation of sine of a t is a over a squared plus s squared, and so on and so forth. And I've just popped in here the Laplace transformation of a constant, which is quite interesting. You could probably get that from here, and this rule, and this rule, right? Because a is the derivative of a t. Check that this rule gives me that. Woo! Which means we probably could quite easily get inductively an expression for the Laplace transformation of any polynomial. Hmm. Now we're going to use it today to solve a differential equation. I've mucked it about a bit to make sure that the coefficients work. I really hope they work. I'm not, ah. all right. But let's try and solve this. Now the key thing is, is the Laplace transformation is linear. So the Laplace transformation of f plus g is the transformation of f plus the transformation of g. Easy to prove. So here we've got x as a function of t. So we want to uh, take the Laplace transformation of the second derivative plus k squared, the Laplace transformation of x is minus k cubed, the Laplace transformation of t. Um, now, the Laplace transformation of x is just going to be f. We're going to call that f of s. And the whole idea is, is we're going to try and figure out what the Laplace transformation of x is. And then, if we recognize it, we will be able to solve it. Right? There is an inverse Laplace transformation, but it's horrible. It involves complex uh, integration. Instead, we're going to use an Im implicit factor is that Laplace transformations are unique. All right? So if two functions have the same Laplace transformation, they are the same function. That's what we're going to do. Now, Laplace transformation of x double dashed is s squared. Oh, dear, that's terrible. Is s squared f of s minus s times the function at 0, but the function at 0 is 0, minus uh, the gradient of the function at 0, which is just 0. So we just get s squared f of s. This pen is dying a death on me. And minus k cubed. And the Laplace transformation of t is 1 over s squared. So what's quite nice here is that we get f of s times s squared plus k squared is minus k cubed over s squared. So my Laplace transformation, so remember this is Laplace transformation of x, is minus k cubed over s squared, s squared plus k squared. Now I'd like to be able to recognize that. Now it doesn't look like anything in here, but it doesn't look like anything here, but this is a product. I reckon I have a sneaky suspicion that we should be able to get this in uh, partial fractions. So we're going to go AS plus B over S squared plus CD plus, plus CS plus E over s squared plus k squared. Let's multiply that up. Minus k cubed s squared s squared plus k squared is a s plus b times s squared plus k squared plus c c s right. Let's just go d, idiot child. 
All right. Now, I'm going to just compare coefficients. I'm going to compare coefficients. Coefficients, coefficients, coefficients. And what am I talking about? None of that is here. You absolute ludicrous human being. It's OK. I know how to do partial fractions. Right. Now, the whole point is, is over here, anything that isn't a constant needs to go away. So let's have a look at my s cubed coefficients. How many s cubed coefficients do I have over here? I get a s cubed, and I'll get c s cubed. That's got to equal to 0. Let's look at the s squares. How many s squares do I get? I get b s squared from there, and I get d s squared from there. That's got to equal to 0. How about the s's? I get a k squared s's, and that's it. So that's got to equal to 0. <laughs> this is getting spicy. So let's just look at the constant terms. I should get minus k cubed. What constant terms do I get here? I get b k cubed, and that's it. So let's get my partial fractions. According to this, a is 0, which leads to c being 0. If you look at this one, b has to be negative 1, which means that d is 1. So that tells me I've left myself no space to work here, no space to work whatsoever. It tells me that. Where am I going to put this? Oh, that's bk squared, isn't it? That's bk squared. That's not happy. That's, b, uh, that's bk squared. So b is negative k, so d is equal to k. All right, I prefer that, actually. That makes a little bit more sense to me. So, where should I do this? Ah, panic. Let's go back up here. Looking at that, I've now got no idea which order I did this. Hopefully it works out. Uh, is minus k over s squared plus k over s squared plus k squared. OK. So that is my Laplace transformation of my solution. So I know that the Laplace transformation of my solution is this. Now, I could recognize this. That's here. Nope, that's here. So if you have a look at that, that is the Laplace transformation of negative kt. And that is the Laplace transformation of sine kt. So what that tells me is x is minus kt plus sine kt. Whew. Obviously, we could just solve that straight up. We can just solve that straight up. Check that that goes into here, or solve it straight up using your normal methods. Give it a go, see what you think. I think this is what I set out to do. I'm fairly sure. Um, at t is 0, I get 0. If I differentiate, I'll get a k and a minus k. Yeah, that should work. I think that works. All right. But obviously, where this is useful is when we get something a little bit more fiddly up here. When we get something a little bit more fiddly up here, all of a sudden, using Laplace transformations to solve these can be a very very powerful tool. This isn't in the A-level, in maths or further maths, but I just thought it was a nice carry-on from that step video we did uh, previously. There you go. Let me know what you think. Did I make any mistakes? I don't, I hope I didn't because that is the function I was hoping to get. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. Let's keep this coming, keep the engagement. Let me know what you want to see. Do you want more of this? Uh, do you want more of this sort of off syllabus content, just let me know and we'll see what we can do. I'm Nick, this was some fairly heavy maths and I'll see you next time.